Welcome to Great Talk and Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where we review movies and TV shows, including all your favorite superheroes from Marvel Comics and DC Comics and much more. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment official channel. Baby, let's go. Now, as we continue on the Disney Plus series by Marvel Studios, this is the season finale of Ms. Marvel Episode 6 review. And, of course, it is a spoiler. So if you have not seen this, go watch the show and then come back and show me some love and help me grow this channel so I can always deliver you guys more content of reviews for everything I do on here. So, y'all been warned. Let's get into it. With the season finale of episode 6, it gave us a high action packed episode that definitely felt like a Marvel movie with a huge cameo surprise by Captain Marvel herself, aka Brie Larson. It was a fun episode to watch with many laughs and memorable moments of this whole episode and of course this whole series and definitely gave us future teases of where Marvel's heading with all these characters and so much. So, let's get into it, as I said. So, Ms. Marvel. So, again, I'm gonna, I'm only going off if they're going to make a season two, of course. So, let's, let me just put that out there. So, there is a, a love triangle, again. Now it seems with Carmen, uh, Bruno, and... Uh, Kimo, aka the Red Dagger, and I. So is a love triangle, and I wonder if they're if they do continue this, whether they do a season two, or in uh, Captain Marvel two, uh, the Marvels. I I wonder who's gonna get this. You know who's gonna win her love, but I feel like this definitely deserves to be on the Disney Plus. I think they should do a season two. And that's one of the reasons why. I definitely want to see where they would go with this. Uh, she finally controlled her power. So, while they uh, went to the high school, you notice that after, you know, all her friends kind of made up and Ms. Marvel realized that these are people who are who who are not blood related family members but just good friends best friends that she can trust them uh the girl you know with nakia this is somebody she should be trust even somebody who looks like she's gonna go into politicians she's somebody she can still trust and has ms marvel's back and with all that her that helped boost her confidence and she did the most heroic thing by protecting her friends and you notice in this episode between Ms. Marvel and Carmen the two were different like Ms. Marvel was not trying to kill them but Carmen was he was beating the shit out of them out of the police officers or the damage control team and Ms. Marvel wasn't really she was just kind of trying to get him out and escape and that was the whole plan and everybody on that of uh, her friends made the ultimate sacrifice trying to protect both of them now in this you notice that in the, the New Jersey slash Pakistani slash Muslim community uh, they have her back they have Ms. Marvel back they enjoy it I think uh, we're going to start seeing a divided world where people are against superheroes and then people who are and obviously New Jersey is on that point but not everybody in New Jersey so just like in Hell's Kitchen people do like Daredevil but not everybody likes Daredevil same with Spider-Man right so you're getting all that and what I'm noticing is that in this they're showing us like okay so now Ms. Marvel is a vigilante now she's finally at her full power because in this episode you notice when they were fighting outside of the high school she she became a giant she was doing like her arm stretch body stretch like uh, Mr. Fantastic but 
like I said, they had to change it up because I it would it would have confused a lot of viewers who are just trying to watch the show just because. And I know some people are like, well, they had the money, they could have CGI'd it, right? But no, I, that's not the point. I think they're trying to make it, like I said from the beginning, they're trying to make it unconfusing as best as they could with Ms. Marvel. And they have a good reason why, which we'll get to that later. And uh, back just to keep on the topic with the community of New Jersey and the uh, Muslim community, she represents them. She represents New Jersey. And people are rooting for her as a vigilante. So that's what you're going to get out of that. Nothing too spectacular, but it does mean a lot. Because I think that this has a lot of, like I said in the beginning, this is something that feels like a Spider-Man story with with the MCU Spider-Man, uh, Peter Parker, a.k.a. Tom Holland. These are probably the stories that were an idea to use in the some of the uh, Spider-Man films with Tom Holland, and these are probably scrapped. And they rechanged the story, which that's very typical in the movie industry and TV show, basically. And I think they changed it up because this this is something you would see Spider-Man do if they did Spider-Man on a Disney Plus series, right? If they didn't do a movie, this is what you would have got if they did a TV show with Tom Holland's uh, version of Spider-Man, right? And you would have those hype. They would he would fight one of the villains in front of his high school at night. Uh and, and, and I'm not and that's not a complaint, that's not a a hate. That's that's not a downplay, that's a that's an upgrade because again, we're not gonna with with Sony owning Spider Man you, it's very difficult and you never know which way they wanna go with uh Spider Man and what Kevin Feige could do. But with Ms. Marvel, since uh, Disney owns this character and the rights to produce uh, Ms. Marvel content, they could do stories like that that they may want to do with Spider-Man, but with Sony's situation, they couldn't. But they are building the Young Avengers. She is a high schooler, so it does make sense. And obviously, it's real... answer people who say why why didn't spider-man show up well spider-man doesn't have the high tech no more spider-man made the deal with dr strange so nobody remembers him being peter parker being spider-man basically and he's on his own again and he's back at bat being basic spider-man you know has to sew his own suit has to make his own webs he doesn't have the tony stark AI because maybe they doesn't recognize him no more. So, with that being said, no. And of course, why Hawkeye didn't show up because they left New York. Uh, Kate Bishop. And, and the one thing I want to point out between Kate Bishop and Spider Man, they would have to drive to New Jersey. Driving from New York to New Jersey, it's not like a long ride, but by the time they get there a uh, scenario like that would have ended especially with uh, Ms. Marvel's power uh, of that so that makes sense uh, well let's go talk about Carmen he, he's he gone rogue and I, I like I said in the last episode I think he's not gonna he's gonna be a villain but not really a full villain he's gonna be an antagonist where like, look, he's going to look for his mom. He's going to be on the run. If they do a season two, I can see the story of them focusing on him looking for his mom. Him going, We know that the, built, the powers that they have, they can time travel if it's looped. But I'm not saying it has to be looped for him to time travel, but he will find a way to get his mom back. And if they did a season two... They left it open like he's not dead. He did escape. He did escape. And he's back in uh, Pakistan. 
and he's over there now. Uh, so, and I really think, for me personally, I think this character should be used more. I think this character has a lot of potential to be a big villain too, if they wanted to go that route, honestly. And if they did a season two, he should be the main antagonist slash villain for season two, or at least one of them. I mean, they can use them. They, I mean, this this the character's not dead, and they had really, really, they really haven't gone scratch the surface of his powers of ability. So that's that's what I think. Uh, as we go off, we uh, at the end after uh, we'll talk about uh, Miss Marvel's father. It seems like when I was saying about the Spider Man thing. Her dad is the one that came up with the Ms. Marvel. Uh, Kamala means Marvel. And he's the Uncle Ben. He's the Uncle Ben. But it, but the father, obviously. But like I said, that's a Spider-Man type story, I think. But for this, it's not a complaint. This is a good thing. It's great. They redid that story and, and applied it for Ms. Marvel. And I think the father and daughter Bond story right there was a great format to use for this episode. Because like I said, the show is so good as a whole show. This show deserves another season. Not just one, but at least five seasons I would shoot. But that's just me. Uh, Bruno is off to California uh, for college. I think, here's what I think. This is a theory. I think that Bruno, he's going to learn some stuff over there. He's going to learn because this could set up the West Side Avengers, which I think that would be amazing. But I think he's going to have the opportunity to get into more technology, maybe start. Or if you remember in the Black Panther movie, uh, T'Challa opened up a, like a school or college some type to have the technology of Wakanda's ability and tech and he's going to California I think Bruno is going to be like Ms. Marvel's uh, chair guy chair person like, like Ned was for Peter Parker and I think this opens the opportunity of that because now we're going to get in the fun stuff with the uh, mutants. So Bruno Mitch said the word mutation, which is the mutants. So, yep, if you if you know the 90s theme song for the X-Men, it probably plays in your head like mine does every time I use the word mutant or mutation. So we know that her DNA is not like the rest of her families. He checked all their families, her uh Ms. Marvel's family's DNA and they do not match like the way she does so her DNA mutated so now now the idea of the X-Men and the mutants exists because if you look at the damage control as equipment now in comic books uh, the truck that shoot like a beam or a sound wave they would do that in the 90s uh, X-Men's uh, TV show series where something would be a loud sound. Or it's the same one, if you watch The Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton, it's the same type of military truck that uses sound wave to stop the Hulk. It hurt his ears. It was something like that. And I think it's one of those. So... I think damage control, like I said, is going to be part of, like, the mutants. I think they're going to get the X-Men. I think the idea of making Ms. Marvel a mutant is not a bad thing. I think you, you, we all knew that they had to come introduce the X-Men slash the mutants in a different way where we haven't seen it. And this is an angle that's different and it hasn't been done like this and 
like I said, this is why Miss Marvel deserves another season. Because if this is the way they want to go to introduce the X Men or the mutants, because even with the Marvels, uh, Captain Captain America two or Captain Marvel two, but that's so many captains, right? But Captain Marvel, she her origin story helps with Rogues getting uh, the X Men character Rogue get her abilities, and. I think this is the tease. This is a tease. They could go this. I, it's really hard to tell how Marvel's going to go with this, but I definitely think this is one of the ways. And I'm shocked that they're doing this, but it's a good shock, and I can live with that. Uh, it's it's the one step closer to get to like Wolverine, Cyclops, and others too so what other Marvel shows on Disney Plus or movies are going to have the X-Men reference now but so far Ms. Marvel is the first uh, Marvel show right now on Disney Plus that even mu used the word mutation which is one step closer to use the word mutants even, even Wanda didn't use the word mutant in the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness so it it's it's it won up that movie but not not the whole movie but just that one part obviously uh, and then in the post credit scene we get Captain Marvel so somehow that bangle switch Captain Marvel and Ms. Marvel so whatever Captain Marvel was Ms. Marvel's there now Kamala is over there we don't know what she could be on another planet. I'm going to say in outer space in the galaxy because that's where uh, Captain Marvel usually went disappeared to. She she was helping other planets that are dealing with the creed. And now we got Captain Marvel back on Earth. So I want uh, the only thing I can think of now is Guardian the Galaxy Volume 3 is a possibility of mentioning uh, Ms. Marvel, but that's a long shot. That's a real long shot because we don't know what that movie's taking us. And if you watch the Thor Love and Thunder, we just know that the Guardian of the Galaxies are, and Thor went their separate ways for, for a point. So, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. That's a long shot, but if they wanted to, that'd be I think that'd be the movie for. But I think they're gonna save all that for the uh, Captain Marvel two or, or the Mer Ms. Marvels. That's that's where the that's really gonna be the answer. But if they wanted to answer it earlier, I would say Guardian of the Galaxies Volume Three. But I that's a long stretch and I, I don't think Marvel would do that but I would like for them to do that but I don't think they would so other than that I think that was a great uh, I think that was a great surprise I think you know a lot of fans even myself was hoping and I'm glad they went I'm glad they got Captain Marvel on that episode even as even as the post credit scene it was great that's what we really needed um this one out of ten for this episode. I'm definitely giving it a ten, and one episode one through six as the whole season one. I'm giving it a perfect ten too, because it was such a great show. Very heart heartwarming, a lot of inspiring, very very eye opening, and this is a tip. This is what a uh, a typical superhero movie is. And it's sometimes it's just great to keep the basics to it, to enjoy the show, and I really liked it. But like I said, there was nothing really else. If I made any there, I there, I have a couple theories. But like I said, one of the theories is that if they did a season two, I think they're going to introduce uh, mutants, but not the X Men group. But they're going to have mutants that they haven't used for a while in the live action 
And I think another thing is they're going to, I think season two should focus more on them going back to Pakistan and doing the Red Dagger. Uh, more focusing more on those. That's what I would love to see. And I think they should do. But who knows? But that's my review. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talking Entertainment, official channel. Subscribe, hit that notification button so you can always be updated with all my latest content. And thank you very much. Peace.